All right, uh, now what? Yeah, how would we do that? Uh, second and third. Yeah, why would that be good? Because that's the case. Um, now we want to pick a, a pair of rows where the concentration of NO2 minus is constant. So we would have now, uh, oh, uh, yeah, I forgot to say something. So let's start with experiment three. Let's go through the same process and write down what we need for experiment three and experiment two. couple things to point out. I noticed that you might still be using y over here. But why don't we use 1, since that's the information that we figured out from the last step. That didn't matter in this case, but sometimes that could make a difference. We want to use the new exponent that we figured out to make our life easier. Oh, also, this is a pet peeve of mine. Um, what do these brackets mean? Concentration. Yeah. So it makes sense to, say, to put this in, in brackets, because this is the concentration of ammonium. But it doesn't make sense to put these numbers in brackets, because these are not the concentration of 0.2. They're just 0.2, if you see what I'm saying. Um, so you wouldn't write that the concentration of NH4 plus is the concentration of 0.2. That doesn't make sense. You would write that the concentration of NH4 plus is 0.2. It doesn't make sense to put brackets around the numbers. That shows that we're not really thinking about what the, the brackets mean. And sometimes that can actually lead to mistakes. So when we write this down, if you need to put in uh, containers, you can put in parentheses. But we shouldn't use brackets, because those have a special meaning. Pardon? Yeah, even if it's molarity. Because again, I, I bet you've never seen this in the textbook, right? You've never seen numbers in brackets. Um, so this is a concentration. We're saying that, in fact, the, 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 the fact that it's, it has to be molarity because it's a concentration. So you would write it like this. Um, it just doesn't make sense to say that the concentration of ammonium is the concentration of 0.2. That's, it doesn't make, doesn't make sense. Um, uh, you would say that the concentration of ammonium is 0.2. So there's just no point to putting brackets around this. How do we show this is a concentration? By putting in the units, if we need to. OK. Sometimes that leads to mistakes, so it's best to avoid that. Uh, all right, and then if we go through this, here again, this comes out to be 2. The k's cancel. Here we get 0.2 to the x over 0.1 to the x. These terms cancel. Here's where we get the advantage of picking um, two rows where this concentration is the same. But I want to point something out here. Notice that this would, method would still work if these concentrations were not the same, because we know this exponent now. So even if these didn't cancel, it wouldn't be the end of the world. We could just do the division and put a, and put a concrete number down here there you will probably see some problems where it's not possible to always pick pairs of trials where one of the concentrations is constant. That's OK, as long as the thing that's not constant is something whose exponent you already know, because then you can just do the division. OK. Uh, but here this cancels. That's nice. And here we get 2 equals 0.2 over 0.1 to the x. So 2 equals 2 to the x. So what would x be? Yeah. Well, don't forget to actually go back and update your rate expression. Now we know that that's going to be 1, because 2 to the first power is 2. All right, well, it would be tempting to declare victory here, but we're not done. We still haven't figured out the rate constant. That's part of the rate expression as well. Any idea how we would figure that out? Where do we get the rate? Because didn't we solve for k if we knew our, our rate? Yeah. 
that's right. That's the right track. That's what we have to do. If we knew the rate, we could solve for k. Where do we get the rate? Don't we get it from root 2 well, to the rate? I mean, I have well, we have initial rates. Yep. And then <laughs> well, yes, we're almost there. We're just not putting the, the pieces together quite. So um, let's write down the expression here. Well, we can write down the expression. I've already got the expression, say, for, um, oh, well, before I forget, there's something else I wanted to say. Um, I made our life a lot easier here by always putting the larger rate on top so that we got an integer here. If I had put 2.7 on top and 5.4 on the bottom, this would have come out to be 1 half. And that would have been harder to interpret. So you should make your life easier here. When you're dividing one equation into the other, divide the smaller rate into the bigger rate. Notice that that's not how they're naturally arranged in the table, right? In the table, the smaller rate's on top and the bigger rate's on the bottom. So if you just do what feels natural, you can end up with fractions over here, which are just a little bit harder to think through. So you, can, um, uh, you should make a note that your life will be easier if you, put, um, if you divide the smaller rates into the bigger rates. Okay, well, let's go back and use this equation. Well, uh, no, I'll try again. The easiest equation here to use is experiment one. What is the rate for experiment one? Uh, 1.35 That's right. Somebody was asking a second ago, where do we get the rates from? Well, that's the answer. You get the rates from the table. The table tells us what the rates are. What's k? I don't know. What should I plug in for the ammonium? Because uh, we're doing experiment one. We're doing experiment one, and according to the table, the concentration for the ammonium is 0.1. And what's the exponent on that? Well, we figured that out now. That exponent should be one. What do I plug in for NO2 minus? Um, 0 0.005. That's right. And what do I use for its exponent? One. All right, now what? Yeah, now we're home free. We've got one equation and one unknown. Um, so now we can solve for k by doing some algebra. Our algebra is not that good. Well, we'll take our time with that. I chose to leave the calculations until the end. If you do it this way, you can do this in one step in your calculator as long as you put parentheses around the bottom to show the calculator it's all one thing. Um, you don't need parentheses for the top if you use the scientific notation key to enter this. Or you can split this up into multiple steps if you feel more comfortable. What did you get for Ken? Okay. That's right. Okay. So at first it wasn't obvious to us how we were going to find K, so you want to make sure this is clear in your notes. Um, so the point here is, um, what did we, so what did we start with here? We started with rate equals K, NH4 plus X. Let me remind you of the series of steps that we needed to solve this problem. First, we found the exponents. And the way we found the exponents was by comparing pairs of trials where one of the concentrations was constant. First, we figured out that this exponent was 1. So then we have to remember to go back and replace this with the number 1. Then we figured out that this exponent was 1 by looking at another pair of trials. So we replaced this with 1. Then I asked you, how can we find k? Well, the point is now we have enough information to plug in numbers for everything but k. And then we can solve for k. Where do we get the numbers to plug in? From the table. 
For example, here I used experiment one, and I was able to plug in a rate and two concentrations, and then we could solve for k. Um, and by the way, at this point, you could use any of the experiments. So I could have plugged in the numbers for experiment two or experiment three. Um, now, this is called the rate constant. So it should be the same no matter which row you use. It should be constant across the rows. Because this is experimental data, it usually won't be precisely the same, but it should be very close. Um, so what you would do in the real lab, maybe, is you would do this for all three experiments and then average the k's to get the most precise value that you can get, because there's presumably some experimental error in this data. So you want to use as many trials as possible. Um, normally, on the homework, I think it's good enough just to pick one row. I picked this row because it had, um, well, it had simple numbers, like 0.1 in it, but you can pick any row. In fact, it might be a good homework exercise to try to figure out k from the other two rows here and make sure you get a number that's pretty much the same. There's one or two problems in your homework where you're expected to figure out the k from every row and then average them, like you would do in the lab. Um, so that's how you find the k. 